Alright, this is a quick video to show y'all how to use uh, Reasons with Machine. If you set it up right, you can actually run sound out of Machine into Reasons and back off into Machine. It's a program called Soundflower. Download Soundflower. Uh, I'll put up the link to it. It'll be at the bottom of the screen. Um, what you want to do is go off in the audio MIDI setup. First thing you want to do, is put it down right here, is actually come and click the plus button. What it's going to do is create a new aggregated device. And on that aggregated device, what you want to do is rename it to whatever your sound card plus sound flower. Uh, as you can see, I've already done mine. I'm using a Sapphire 56, so I did Sapphire 56 plus Soundflower. So after you get that set up, what you want to do is go over here, and you want to click Use for the aggregated device that you're in. What you want to do is select the clock source to be whatever sound card you're using. It's going to say either a Soundflower or a Sapphire. Mine's a Sapphire 56. So I selected the Sapphire as the clock source. Then what you want to do is, let me bring this over here, click resample on Soundflower. I think it's already clicked, you know, when you install it or whatever. So, so what we're actually going to be doing is using the 16 in and out to actually transport audio back and forth between Reason and Machine. Okay. What you want to do is go up to your preferences and Reasons and what you want to do is go to Advanced and handle the MIDI situation otherwise it won't sync right. So you go to Advanced Put bus A because uh, this allows you. I actually got this from Knockover and Machine Tutorials. Good looking out for this. Without that information, I would have never ever been able to actually figure none of this out. So, uh, if you want to get your machine game up, you really need to go over to MachineTutorials.com. Man, I'm telling you, it's the best site ever if you're working with machine or native instruments or just want to get any type of information on production. So, First, what you want to do is set up bus A to machine virtual output. Then, here's the key right here. You want to set the MIDI clock sync to machine virtual output. Once you get it to a set to machine virtual output, what happens is anytime that you push play off a machine, it'll actually control reasons. So, I close the preference. I shouldn't have done that. Hold on. Here we go. Bring it back. Um, after you get all of that it's set up and you got it synced, next thing you want to do is go to audio and you want to make sure that your audio device is actually set to the aggregated device that you, sh that you set up just a minute ago. So once you get that done, notice it says 56 plus Soundflower. So now it gives you your 28 channels that I had in uh, the Sapphire 56 plus the 16 channels that I have in Soundflower. So now that you got all of that set up, you want to exit out of that. Alright, now that you got that done, what you want to go to is Sync and click MIDI Clock. I've already had this stuff set up previously. So once you got it set to the MIDI Clock, what happens is every time that I push play in machine it does play off and read. Now you see that we're controlling the uh, transport without actually using a rewire application. So now what we're going to do is set up the uh, routing in machine. What you actually want to do is go to audio and MIDI settings. Once you get here First thing you want to do <clears throat> is go to routing and as you can see the last four coming out of machine 15 and 16 left and right 
would actually be your Soundflower uh, channels. So right now I've I automatically got four channels of Soundflower loaded up after the 28 channels of my uh, Sapphire. Now you can auto you can go in there and change it and put any Soundflower just by clicking on it. You can add in extra Soundflower um, channels if you want. Right now I'm not going to do that. Four is actually going to be good enough for me right now. Then you go into input. Now as you can see I've been doing this a little bit. So what I did was I actually went off into my inputs and changed it to the last four channels basically of Soundflower. So if you count from the back you'll know that it's the last four channels of uh, Soundflower. So now that you got all of that set up, you hit OK, and now let's do a little bit of routing. Alright, I got a drum track I've already made. It's in Group A, so what I want to do is click the Groups tab, make sure it's set to Out right here. Then I want to take it, and I'm going to go to Out 16. Once I click on Out 16, I have all of this drum track group A routed into reasons now when you get over the reasons what you want to do is click the more audio tab that what you want to do is make sure you know where your audio is coming in so what I'm gonna do is bring it down alright I'm playing and as you can see there's no audio there's nothing playing so alright all the audio that I have is actually routed through reasons bam you see it going right here so now that we have the audio we know where the input is coming from it's uh, on 31 and 32 right here so we're gonna flip the rack and we're gonna take the screen 4 take it over to 31 32 and then we're going to take the output and we're going to run it into 43 and 44 so now the output is going to actually roll right back off into machine now I'll select group C we're going to cut it on and then I'm going to go into sound. I'm going to put a, a input in. And I'm going to change it from internal to external one. And bam. Now we have. Turn it up. Alright, of course you know the screen. Alright, let's see if we can actually do some tweaking. If we wanted to, we could actually, uh, uh, you can actually run it through any processor that you wanted to. So I just loaded up a, a reverb unit real quick and uh, let's see what we can get out of it. So that's it guys, uh, that's the way to use uh, all the processors from Reasons off in the machine, so have fun with it.